The Dietitians Association of Australia is calling on the government to update its national nutrition policy, which was last revised back in 1992. The call comes amid a growing obesity crisis in Australia, with 67% of adults now overweight or obese. That's a rise of more than 10% in two decades. So how much is this health crisis actually costing us? Jane Martin, head of the Obesity Policy Coalition, joins us now. Jane, thank you very much for being with us. It's estimated uh, tens of billions of dollars are spent on obesity-related costs each year. Is that, uh, is that number rising? Yes, it's expected to rise because obesity rates uh, are also expected to rise over time in line with trends. And what's concerning is that we're seeing people get above a healthy weight at younger ages and up until now we've seen big increases in obesity so the prevalence of people who are overweight has remained uh, relatively stable but the proportion of people who are obese uh, that's risen and with these rises we will see um, an increase in the diseases related to overweight and obesity such as type 2 diabetes, uh, heart disease and some cancers along with issues around depression and self-esteem particularly in children. Uh, we have 26% of children above a healthy weight. Many of those will take that into ad um, adulthood. So this is a problem that's getting worse. It's going to put an increasing strain on our economy and our health system and there are no signs that it's slowing down let alone reversing so some really serious attention needs to be paid to this by the government. Right. What is the government doing about this now? Are they doing anywhere near enough? Well, I think we're uh, seeing the calls today from the dietitians to update uh, the uh, Australian Dietary Guidelines, which are important, but they need to be promoted to people as well. But we really need to push these policy levers that government's been very reluctant um, to use to ensure the healthy choice is the easy choice. So we have an obesity summit on Friday. It's really important that we don't have the influence of the processed food industry. Uh, they have an imperative to make profit. There's a huge profit margin in highly processed foods. They spend millions of dollars promoting it to people. It's very available and very cheap and that's a really serious problem. So the influence of industry uh, needs to be curbed um, in development of an obesity strategy uh, and we really need to pull those levers around price, promotion and availability to support people to make healthier choices for themselves and for their families. So I suppose that's an interesting point, the, the point of cost, because a lot of people are focused on their budget when it comes to feeding their family and they say, well, a lot of this uh, unhealthy food is, is just cheaper. Uh, unfortunately, that's the way it is. So what do you think is the way out of that issue? Well, I think we need to do things like increase the price um, of junk foods, particularly sugary drinks. It's been through taxes? Uh, uh, through taxes. So that's something that's been implemented in 45 jurisdictions globally. Uh, it's reduced consumption. Uh, it works. Uh, and, that's, and that's a lever that's been used and, and should be implemented. So 20% or more, it would save lives. Uh, it would put valuable uh, funds into the uh, national coffers that could be then spent on prevention. At the moment, we're spending 1.5% of the annual health budget on prevention. We really need to up that. Otherwise, we're going to be burdened with the costs of these diseases and our system will not be able to cope. So there's economic costs but there's also the productivity costs that we're also going to forego if people are suffering from these chronic diseases over a long period of time they won't be able to work and then our economy will suffer because of that as well. Right so that's that's covered the issue of um, taxation quite quite uh, well there. What about the the issue of prevention particularly when it comes to advertising uh, unhealthy food options and I suppose in particular to that uh, advertising of unhealthy food options on government owned assets like public transport and, and government buildings. What do you think? Well that's something that a lot of the states um, are dealing with and considering at the moment. ACT have already um, implemented that policy uh, and it's something that uh, Queensland has said that they will do so that's in the state's remit and that's really good and there's a lot of work great work happening um, at the state level so uh, we've had a very strong call to action to the national government through 40 agencies uh, public health community medical groups uh, academic groups calling on government through tipping the scales to implement an eight-point plan and that includes um, controlling marketing of junk food to children uh, the main area there 
for uh, attention is on uh, television and on digital platforms because that's where our children are being very carefully and specifically targeted by unhealthy food brands with their products uh, and parents aren't even aware of this kind of marketing. It's very pervasive, it's very powerful and it's wallpaper in children's lives. So there are two of the really key areas and I know the DAA was also calling for that today but there are many, many groups who agree that this is um, an area where government needs to intervene and protect children from, um, from these large companies who are grooming them and making huge profits out of this children's market. Right. But Jane, by way of context, is Australia's obesity issue more significant than comparable countries around the world? Uh, we are similar. I think we're in about the top four of the OECD countries. I mean, it's not, um, it's not a mantle you want to have. It's not the sort of gold medal you'd be looking for. But that just shows uh, that Australia is not unique. Uh, and what's driving this is similar to other countries. It's the rise of the um, of ultra processed foods becoming so available, so cheap and so heavily promoted. So people are reacting to their environment. Uh, we can't blame them for that. We have to create a supportive environment for health and we have to curb uh, these uh, companies which are pushing uh, these um, and promoting these products. 30% um, of, of what children are eating is basically junk food. Um, a very, very poor propor small proportion of people are eating a healthy diet. We need to shift that uh, and we need to ensure that healthy food is available, that it's heavily promoted uh, and that it's cheap. So we need to sort of deal with demand and supply. Absolutely. You've, you've outlined a couple of uh, strategies there uh, by way of uh, the tax and the prevention uh, with regard to uh, advertising. What's the number one thing that you're calling on the government to do right now? Well, I think we know that we need a package of um, elements and that's what will be discussed on Friday, that there won't be one particular thing, but if you do a number of things such as implement a health levy, restrict marketing of unhealthy food to children, uh, and ensure that healthy food is available and junk food isn't available in places like schools, healthcare uh, facilities, sports centres, that kind of thing. Um, and a public education campaign. We've got effective campaigns through Live Lighter that we know work. That's the kind of package that we need. In the same way that we address tobacco smoking, there wasn't one thing. It was the synergy of actions that government took to support people to um, stop children from starting to smoke and to support people to quit. And that's the kind of um, strategy that we need to implement. Hopefully, um, Friday is the start of those discussions and we're going to see um, evidence-based recommendations discussed that really will shift the dial. Uh, and without the influence of the food industry who have an imperative to make profit um, and maximise um, maximize their profits. And uh, it's important that they're not in that discussion. Jane Martin, Executive Manager at Obesity Policy Coalition. Uh, best of luck on Friday and going forward. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.